Letters Home really gives audiences a portrait of the soldier experience in the two uh, ongoing wars that we've had in Iraq and Afghanistan. It, and it really gives uh, sort of a compelling portrait of what it's like to serve our country today. Hey Dad, it was a warm night in Baghdad. There was a slight breeze in the air and the dark clouds above looked as though they were toying with the idea of opening up and releasing their fury on the dimly lit city below. The young woman running on the path that paralleled the Tigris River was secretly praying they would open up and cool her perspiring forehead. She panted along as she took in the beauty of the scenery around her. The river to her left and across from it city lights. To her right were the ruins of what were once the most magnificent palaces in the world. It would only be a few weeks before this chapter of her life would be over. A year ago, a student in college whose only concerns were making rent and restocking the ramen noodles. Michelle could never have dreamed how in one year her life had turned into a top that couldn't seem to stop spinning. It had spun her all the way to Baghdad, Iraq and turned the course of her life upside down. As she neared the home stretch, she pondered how this year had changed her perspective on life, culture, war, and things worth dying for. She began to think about her many experiences. Some would call them adventures, some nightmares, but she preferred to think of them as spices that gave the story of her life richer flavor and saucier smells. Yes, her life had definitely gone from TV dinner to world cuisine. Maybe someday I'll write a book about this. Give it my own personal spin, she thought to herself as she began her cool down. <laughs> Okay, Pops, maybe I will write a book about this place someday. Who knows? Let's see. I went running tonight and thought about how much I miss you guys. I miss you guys and love you. And I will try to be better at writing more. Love, your daughter, Michelle. When we first mounted it, the play was a little bit different. There were different letters in the play, and I've sort of updated it as the years have gone on. Um, I when the war was at the top of the headlines, the audiences were uh, obviously a little bit different and intrigued by what was going on because it was part of the news cycle. Now it's a little bit different and we're almost telling a play that's more history. I know I haven't written in a while. I'm sorry, but I've been kind of busy lately. You probably know why. Well, I'm sure the question in your mind is how am I doing? Well, pretty good, considering the circumstances. Right now I'm in Iraq, but by the time you get this letter, I don't know where I'll be. Home, hopefully. These last couple of days, I've really learned a lot about myself and everyone around me. You could read every book on war there is to read or talk to vets about their experiences, but nothing can prepare you for what you'll see. Our company's taken two casualties so far. A machine gunner stepped on a mine and took some shrapnel to the foot and leg. He's all right, though. The other one was a lieutenant, Lieutenant Childers. He got shot in the gut in our first fight. I was standing right next to him when he got hit, and it didn't look too bad at first. But he died before the medevac choppers even got there. He was the first American to die in the war. I've never seen anyone die before, especially someone as close to me as him. I don't know if I ever talked about him before, but he was probably one of the best Marines and men I've ever known. Without him pushing us and teaching us, I don't know if any of my platoon would be half as good as it is. I never felt so scared in my entire life. I never felt so alone. One minute he's there fighting, the next he's gone. But we've pushed forward, and I hate to say this, but I think we've grown stronger. We have a new form of motivation now. Instead of let's win this so we can go home, it's let's win this so that the lieutenant didn't die for naught. Still, it's the worst thing I've seen in my entire life. And I've seen a lot of other stuff that gives me nightmares. But I am sick of talking about bad stuff. 
trying to think of something funny to say. It's not too funny. The other morning, around 5 a.m., we were all at Sane Posts when we heard something in front of us. Now, normally I would just say shoot, but there were a lot of Marines and civilians around, so we want to be careful we shoot. It was too dark to see with our eyes and not enough illumination to use our night vision, so naturally we were scared shitless. So for about 30 minutes, there we are, all in our fighting holes, tired ass as hell, scared out of our minds, itching to shoot, just waiting for the sun to come up or for it to start shooting at us. After 30 minutes, we were told to get back in our vehicles, and everyone turned and ran for the Amtrak as fast as we could, hoping we would get shot in the back. As I got to the vehicle, suddenly I turned to see if we had to shoot whoever it was, and there he was. A little baby camel looking for his mommy. Just imagine 30 rough, tough, grunt marines running for their lives from a little baby camel. I love and miss y'all so much. Don't worry about me, because you know somehow this skinny mick always lands on his feet. <laughs>